is Lisa from coochiecoochiefood.com. So I have a really special video tutorial for you for Soa Softy Month. Soa Softy is a month-long extravaganza organized by Trixie of Colored Buttons. Every day, a sewing blogger shares a sewing tutorial for a very simple project that can be sewn by hand by a beginner sewist or even a kid. My tutorial this year is a neck pillow. I've got two patterns. One is for this size, which is from children up to adults, and I have a smaller one for toddlers. Um, you can fill it with whatever you want. I chose to use memory foam, which is really great for support. And to make it extra special, I added a special carry strap that snaps open and you can attach it to your suitcase, your backpack, um, hang it on the wall, or do whatever you want with it. So, let me show you how to sew this fantastic neck pillow. First, download the free pattern from kuchukuchuku.com. You'll need tape and scissors to assemble the pattern. As for fabric, I'm using a minky with these raised dots. I'm using both red and yellow. To cut the fabric, some fabric shears, I use Fisker's razor edge scissors. You'll need a pen to trace the pattern. For sewing it, I am using this um, thread, which is size 8 DMC, color 321, it's bright red. And to sew, I'm using the DMC chenille needles, number 22. Regular pins you need. You will need some sort of stuffing as well. I am using these memory foam scraps, which I love for pillow. They give a lot of structure. Then, if you are going to sew the optional carry strap, you'll need some medium weight, weight uh, fusible interfacing. There's the shiny side that sticks and the fabric side. Then, a couple of snaps, or you can use Velcro if you want. I prefer snaps. The pattern has six pages. The first two are for the child size. That's for infant to about four years old. Then there's the adult size pattern. It's on pages three and four, then five and six. Um, let's assemble the pattern. First, you need to trim off the bottom uh, margin and then the right hand margin as well. This one I'm just doing the bottom margin. Page two also has the strap piece. Okay, let's join up the pages. The two triangles make a rhombus and you need to also line up all these other lines. Tape it together. And continue with the other pages doing the same. Now you need to join these two pieces here. Again, matching up the triangles so that they make rhombuses and also the lines and the page margins. Tape it all together. Okay, there we go. All right, in theory you would need to join those but it's not necessary for this particular pattern. We're going to do the adult size. Um, this is the child size, but we're going to do adult size and the strap. So let's cut out those pieces. Here we go. Here are the pieces. Let's start with the strap. Trace the strap piece twice on the non-sticky side of the medium weight interfacing. Keep them a little bit apart like this. Then cut out around them, leaving a little bit of space. The green line goes down the strap piece, so you need to position it that way on the fabric as well. Put it shiny side down onto the back side of your fabric. Cover it up with a protective ironing cloth and iron it on hot without steam according to the manufacturing instructions of your interfacing. If your fabric has a nap like mine does, which means the fuzziness goes in a direction, then it goes against it and here it goes in the direction. You want that so that it goes down. Fold it in half like this and pin across the top and then the long open side. Put your two fabric layers together, right sides facing. Again, make sure that the nap is going down if you have a nap on your fabric. 
put the piece down we're going to sew along the traced line so leave a little bit of space around it okay pin it down if you want to keep it in place then trace all around the pattern remove the pattern piece and just add some pins to keep it in place again the optional strap goes like this so mark it in the center top now we need an opening place, so mark it off to the top side like this. Now we're going to use this thicker thread. Let's tie a knot, make a little loop, put the end behind it like so. Then pull out that end through the loop like that. My daughter Sophia sewed this strap. It's a little bit crooked, so I would suggest actually drawing lines about one centimeter away from the edges to sew along. Stick the thread in the edge like that, go around the edge just to hold it into place, and let's do a back stitch. To do a back stitch, you see where the thread comes out, put your needle in a little bit to the right, and take it out a little bit to the left of where the thread comes out. Let's not let it get all tingled up. Okay, so to the right of the thread and out on the left. Move the pins as you go. Let's go to the corner, then get your needle in at the corner and turn. There we go, see how it is on the back. Let's go like that all the way down. Okay, when you're done, let's trim the corners off for better turning. Make sure not to cut into the stitches. Okay, now we need to turn our straps right side out. To do that, you can even use something simple like a pen. You just kind of open it up and poke everything through until it comes out the other way. I'm going to use these mega tweezers that came with my overlock machine. So I just stick them in. I poke down the center. That way I can grab it from the inside. Whoops, it came out. Okay, scrunch it in gently. And just holding onto it with the tweezers, I pull it out. There we go, it slips right out. So Pull it the right way out. Stick the pen or tweezers or whatever you want in the inside and gently poke out the corners so you have a nice flat rectangle. Now let's sew the actual pillow. Remember we're going to sew around. We're going to leave though this space open. We also need to leave this space for the strap. So let's start at this point here the edge of where our opening will be. Pull up the needle, and again, we're doing the back stitch. So the thread comes up, put the needle in a little bit to the right of where the thread comes up, and pull it out a little bit to the left. Continue this way until you get to where the strap is. Now the hands you saw before were my hands. These hands are my daughter, Sophia's. She is 12 years old, and here you can see how she is doing a beautiful back stitch by hand. I just wanted to show that a child can do this project. So we've sewn all the way around to where the strap will go. I put a little star just to mark where my daughter had to stop sewing. Let's take our straps, put them together like this, nice and flat. You can see the two seam allowances on the inside, which make bulk. So I like to put them one on either side just to reduce the bulk that we need to sew through. Put a little pin if you want just to help keep them together so they won't slip around. Now they'll go like this. Um, we need to leave one centimeter seam allowance outside. You need to put it in. I left this pin in just to hold it in place so it won't move around. So. Let's put it inside. Remember we need about one centimeter out beyond where the traced line is so that they can get sewn in properly. Fold everything down, making sure that the ends stick out by one centimeter at least. Pin it in place. I put one inside the line and another outside just to hold it better. Now we're going to continue sewing from that line here over to this other one. All right, now we're at the end. Let's make a knot. We grab a little bit of fabric on the, like that, make a loop, put the needle through the little loop, pull, and there's your knot. Now we need to cut off all the excess fabric. 
Normally you would have to sew notches like this because it's a curve, but I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm using pink and shears, which are zigzag fabric shears. So cut all around the edges, making sure not to cut into the stitching. Now, here's the opening and we need to pull everything out. Remember there's the pin, so let's pull that out. Okay, so just slip everything out, right side out. Put your hand inside to push out all of the curves carefully. And there it is. Okay, here is our cute little pillow. Now we need to stuff it. So take whatever you're using for stuffing. Again, I'm using memory foam. Just stuff it inside the hole. Now let's use the ladder stitch, otherwise known as invisible stitch, to close up the opening. What you do is you pull the needle across the opening, a little stitch, and pull across again. And you can see, just pulling it gently, everything comes together. So straight across, take a little bit of fabric, pull, and go straight across, another little bit of fabric. You can find my full ladder stitch tutorial on my blog or on YouTube. So let's make our knot, Go make a loop like we did before. This time I'm gonna go through twice just to hold it better, pull it. Okay, to hide the thread, you stick the needle back in here, close to the stitching, and pull it out wherever. Here's the needle, pull it out, okay, and then just cut the thread and we're done. Now let's add the snaps to the strap. The straps need to overlap a little bit like this. Add your snaps or your Velcro. I really love using memory foam for pillows because it's squishy, but at the same time it's rigid enough for a good pillow. So here we have our great neck pillow sewn by a kid. If you want, you can also sew these pillows by machine, which is what I did for these two. We have the adult and the child size. Head on over to coochiecoochicoo.com for lots of great sewing tutorials, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel on YouTube. See you soon.